Hello everyone, good morning, good evening. Uh, welcome to the webinar, Defense Strategies Against Kubernetes Attack uh, TTPs. Uh, my name is Manoj and I'm a threat researcher with Tigera. Uh, I'm currently focusing on Kubernetes and cloud attack surfaces. Uh, my background has been vulnerability research, malware reverse engineering, and exploit development at a point. And my previous roles uh, were at Juniper Network and Intel Technologies where I looked at their security posture. So uh, today's agenda is uh, straightforward where uh, we will look at the attack surfaces available to external threat actors and how uh, each external threat actor, which is active right now in the wild, is targeting them, and what are the mitigation strategies we can use right now to uh, stop them. So uh, current uh, trends uh, from the Kubernetes perspective is uh, the, the external threat actors are interested in uh, mining cryptocurrency and this mining activity kind of picks up uh, when cryptocurrency uh, price comes down. Uh, and and to, to mine this cryptocurrency, uh, these attackers kind of try to find uh, the misconfigured uh, Docker APIs, Kubernetes API to access available compute uh, on the internet. And for that, they scan uh, our entire internet to see if they, they can find anything. And once they find such misconfigured APIs, they do, uh, do, they do get that initial foothold. They do privilege escalation and move laterally. And in some cases we found uh, they, they do exploit unpatched CVEs uh, so that, uh, they, they get that initial foothold uh, easily. So uh, with that, this is the threat matrix for Kubernetes from Microsoft. And uh, as you can see, there are almost 45 techniques listed here and each uh, technique can be used to compromise uh, your container. Uh, attacker can, uh, uh, do uh, privilege escalations can uh, uh, can uh, can move laterally within your containers uh, and do the data exfiltration ultimately using this technique. So today we'll be focusing uh, on uh, these initial access techniques uh, from Kubernetes perspective. So on the right uh, you can see this is your typical Kubernetes cluster where uh, you have host or node which is running on your cloud hardware and this is a particular instance and inside that host uh, you have your container runtime running and you have kubernetes vertical which is kind of managing all these containers that you deploy and by configuration uh, kubernetes api kubelet api docker api uh, can be exposed to internet and uh, attacker can uh, really find out uh, these APIs and try to get that initial foothold if you haven't properly secured it. Uh, your services are also exposed out of this uh, system. So Kubernetes can really expose your services. And also there are services like SSH, uh, MySQL, which can run on host itself. Uh, and uh, last but not least, attacker can really make use of uh, the malicious uh, images that are hosted on public infrastructure or public repositories like Docker Hub, uh, where uh, you can end up pulling one of the compromised uh, or, or uh, image uploaded by attacker and uh, uh, you, your container can get compromised because of that and ultimately your cluster. So this, this is the attack surface usually is targeted by uh, threat actors currently uh, to get that initial foothold. 
Uh, and this is just a point in time, just uh, before uh, this webinar, I tried to see how many uh, Docker APIs are available and how many Kubelet instances, which is a Kubernetes process running on Node, is exposed on internet. And I almost found 500 entries for each. And Palo Alto did a study a few months back where they almost found uh, 50,000 containers uh, publicly accessible. And we do agree with that number as uh, each Kubernetes cluster can uh, run multiple containers, even the Docker API can run uh, multiple containers and numbers can really add up really fast. So uh, let's begin by looking at our first uh, external threat vector, which is uh, Team TNT. And Team TNT uh, came up with its new malware, which is uh, Hildegard. And this particular malware is you know, discovered by uh, Palo Alto. Uh, and uh, this is targeting a Kubelet API to be specific, to gain that initial foothold into the Kubernetes. And uh, this API has to be unsecure in order to get that initial foothold. And they did the same thing for uh, Docker interfaces in the past. And they, uh, once they get such APIs, they usually uh, drop a bunch of shell scripts and do the initial installation. And the intent and focus for this uh, particular attack vector is uh, Monero coin mining. And uh, uh, they have a bunch of scripts which can uh, look at your cloud IAM, AWS, uh, or SSH keys so that uh, if there is a chance to expand their presence, they would be able to do that. And they have typical CNC capabilities, uh, interesting evasion and DDoS capabilities. So as we started uh, looking at this threat actor closely, the first thing we found was their uh, rootkit. And this uh, rootkit was um, compiled uh, dynamically so that uh, they, would, they wouldn't be uh, targeting specific Linux architecture, uh, rather the binary should be able to run on as many uh, Linux architecture or flavors uh, as possible. And they kept uh, the dependencies uh, minimum, as you can see in the picture, only libc and libdl. So with that, uh, the the interesting functionality abuse is LD preload. LD preload is a Linux ability or Linux functionality where if uh, uh, if you are running any process uh, inside a Linux and you enable this LD preload functionality, uh, the binary defined by uh, LD preload will be loaded into that process memory uh, and and this will be enabled globally. So any process you run, it will be uh, adding the library or binary uh, uh, kind of showed by uh, this LD preload uh, parameter. And attacker is exactly doing that. He is uh, loading his, he, as soon as uh, he compromises or they compromise uh, this uh, particular container, they set this uh, LDP load uh, parameter. Uh, and after that, any process that anyone runs, uh, it will load their malicious uh, uh, library uh, into it. And what this malicious library does is hooks into readdir and readdir64 uh, system calls. And what these system calls do is if you're going to do uh, PS or LS, uh, it's gonna give you a list of processes or list of files on file system, right? So uh, attacker will be able to always hide uh, the files or processes uh, it wants. So if administrator goes into a container and does what are the processes running here, he won't be able to see Hildegard processes running or crypto mining, mining processes run by this particular malware. 
uh, and uh, and uh, as we looked into this closely, so uh, they kind of have all the symbols already available inside the binary. They didn't strip any, so we were uh, able to look at the uh, code uh, pretty easily. And here in the red box, you can see see that they are directly making a call to a particular symbol to locate read dir64 and and they are able to override the read dir64 after that just to show you how it looks like so uh, at initially in this this is a particular container where we are just running a, a ps command and you can see there is a netcat process which is uh, running here and after that we just uh, used ld preload and uh, loaded our malicious binary which kind of hides this uh, netcat process and after that we did this uh, ps command and as you can see in the output below there is no netcat binary so that's how this particular technique works and also team tnt used uh, already available uh, bot b uh, red teaming tool and what this tool does is it can abuse uh, c groups if you have a privileged container so if team tnt ends up breaking into a privileged container they can basically uh, abuse c group and uh, run the commands on host uh, here uh, we uh, use this body framework and uh, just did the host name command and as you can see in the red this is the name of the host rather than name of my container and after that we in the next red box you can see we were able to read the files on the host uh, escaping the containers so uh, these threat actors uh, Kind of uh, here, what, what we saw is uh, they used ready to use third party tools and integrated into their malware scripts. So, for command and control, they used Keymate and uh, IRC uh, as a Ziggy startups. Uh, and as we talked, they use uh, LD preload technique using lead process hider uh and uh bot b and periods uh, for container breakout and credential harvesting and uh, for dns monitoring bypass they simply override the adc host file and they have a lot of scripts to scan the internet so that they could expand their presence uh, once they compromise uh, your infrastructure and the intent seemed to be same uh, as we discussed earlier uh, a monero coin mining uh, so this is the uh, these are the basic capabilities of this particular threat actors. So let's move on uh, to next one. Uh, this is Kinsing. So Kinsing uh, targeted uh, the Docker API, and we didn't see that Kinsing upgraded and targeted Kubernetes Kubelet API, uh, but uh, it used uh, uh, another interesting technique where it uh, kind of uploaded its images to public infrastructure that is docker repository uh, and and uh, uh, users i think at some point there were millions of users which were pulling down uh, images uploaded by them and this this is uh, uh, in in our view, uh, the Kinsin's rootkit was kind of advanced compared to Team TNTs, and but the methods were almost similar. And what we found that uh, this Kinsin malware just used the Bjork uh, uh, project, which is already available on the GitHub. And focus seems to be similar. Uh, the coin mining, command and control, and uh, encryption and evasion. So uh, uh, when we looked at this uh, particular malware's uh, rootkit uh, closely, uh, it was similar to Team TNTs. They use dynamically uh, linked uh, uh, binary to target as many flavors of Linux and architectures. 
And uh, this is comparatively advanced, as you can see on the right, there are a number of functions in this particular malware embedded inside their uh, rootkit. And all these functions, uh, they could do, uh, they, they could hide process name, TCP ports, uh, directory names and file names. Uh, so they were not limited to uh, process names uh, uh, as we seen earlier. And uh, the techniques were same uh, that we discussed, and the preload to hook this uh, particular system calls. And additionally, these guys used encryption to hide their uh, hide their uh, modules. And th this is a simple XR uh, encryption. So. Uh, this is uh, one of the image uh, which was uh, uploaded by uh, Kinsing operators, and this is uh, uh, th th this is the this is this picture is shown uh, of a tool called Dive, which can read the container images and each layers and show what were the changes in each layer. And as you can see, uh, it has a Monero coin miner. Uh, which is being downloaded here uh, in this particular layer. And this particular image had over a million hit when we uh, kind of uh, got this particular image. So uh, almost a million uh, compromises wherever it ran. And our another threat vector uh, from Kubernetes perspective is Doki. And Doki is a backdoor, and this is a particularly a binary which was uh, previously undetected with Engro botnet. Uh, the the reason to mention this because it uses a domain generation algorithm to contact. Though this is not a new technique, but they used a really novel DGS seed in their operation. And they use the Dogecoin API. And Dogecoin is, uh, you may be uh, familiar with this. This is a popular cryptocurrency. Uh, cryptocurrency, uh, uh, which is available on the internet. And uh, uh, if you are not familiar with domain generation algorithms, so this is really simple where uh, attackers malware, which is running inside your compromised cluster and attacker, which is sitting somewhere on the internet has access to same seed, which is uh, date and time or currency pair or temperature of particular city or even a trending topics on Twitter. And they will use that seed and feed it to a pseudo random string generator and uh, get a random string and append uh, a particular uh, uh, PLD to it, like .com, uh, depending on a day of the week or a month of the year, uh, and, and query that particular domain. And uh, interesting thing is malware, which is running inside your uh, compromised container, an attacker would be able to generate same list. And what attacker needs to do is just go ahead and register one of, uh, one of the domains uh, from there. And the malware eventually will be able to uh, query and contact to that uh, particular domain. And here attackers use the Dogecoin wallet. So they pre-built a wallet address inside, uh, uh, inside uh, this Doki backdoor. And uh, what they used as a seed was last money uh, spent by attacker. So whatever the last transaction amount was, that was used as a seed for this particular algorithm. And as you can see on the right, this is the Dogecoin function that they implemented where they uh, queried and called uh, the, the last money sent by attacker. So with that, let's uh, move towards uh, mitigation and how we can mitigate all these threat actors that we discussed right now. So first, uh, 
the first suggestion is use scratch images because if you uh, use a scratch image, it will contain only dependencies uh, which are required by your application uh, and won't have any API to execute or invoke any other binary, which is, uh, let's say, drop by attacker. And it may not even have the dependencies required for that particular ex executable. So this really uh, helps uh, where attacker have to be uh, very crafty to execute any executable. Uh, if you can go a step further, you can compile your binary for a specific architecture uh, and link it statically so that there won't be, there will be only one file on your container which will be running. And there is no way attacker can drop uh, another executable and invoke it uh, uh, if, if uh, you use a particular strategy. And this really mitigates uh any uh attack uh, that we have seen using uh, uh installation using shell scripts or uh, rootkits uh, that we discussed uh second is use uh, zero trust policies to block access it is easier to block access uh, ingress access to kubelet and docker api uh you can just implement a policy uh, for that but uh, we would want you to go further and implement zero trust, trust for uh, your north south traffic that is uh, that, that is possible uh, with respect to your kubernetes uh, uh, kubernetes clusters uh, and only white least uh, uh, necessary flows going or uh, coming inside and you can uh, implement that same zero trust for your east-west traffic so that if attacker ends up compromising your container or a particular service, he won't be able to uh, move laterally that easily. And third thing is block access to external DNS. If you are running a Kubernetes cluster, the only DNS server you should be talking to is a core DNS. And uh, with that, uh, on, on the on the right, you can see that we have particular suggestions in blue. That is, uh, if possible, log all your L7 traffic for or L7 data for your service. Uh, any processes that is being uh, spawned inside a container, and audit logs for your Kubernetes API, and have a machine learning algorithms to monitor all these so that if there is any suspicious activity, machine learning algorithm can notify you of that. And last but not least, implement threat feeds. They can tell you if attack, uh, the, the uh, attacker attacks seen by uh, uh, other uh, members of the community and uh, you can uh, kind of uh if if you get compromised in the same way that somebody else has you would you should be able to detect that uh the next thing is uh, you should be enabling docker contain press uh on your docker apis so that only images signed by you uh, are running on your uh, docker so it uh, you won't be able to run any publicly available Docker images, not just you, attacker won't be able to run any publicly available Docker images uh, from unknown sources because of it. And uh, uh, last uh, suggestion is have your container isolation policy ready. So when you suspect a particular workload uh, behaving suspiciously, or there is an issue with that, you can add that particular label of a policy to that container and uh, uh, isolate it right away so that uh, uh, you contain the blast radius for the issue. Uh, and the useful projects are uh, here given by us is Project Calico, of course, to implement all this zero trust that we talked about. And there is a really cool project, EGA Intel, if you are logging DNS domains from your uh, core DNS uh, or within the Kubernetes cluster, you can check those 
uh, domains against this uh, LSTM based deep mo uh, learning model to know if it was a DGA or not. Uh, and, and that's about uh, mitigation uh, with respect to uh, external threat uh, actors which are currently targeting Kubernetes. So if you have any questions related to uh, one of these threat actors or uh, if you have any particular use case, do visit us at tiger.io and uh, let us know. So thank you and uh, have a good day, good night.